What's up guys? Here's a quick TLDR of Vicus Gate 1. Want to quickly mention that if you struggle with this fight and or need people to run with, I encourage you guys to join our Discord and my Twitch stream as I'll be running learning party groups helping less geared, less experienced players clear this every single week. A lot of you guys won't be able to clear or maybe even get an opportunity to legitimately learn this raid and I am more than willing to do what I can to help you learn it. Let's begin. Like Gate 1 in Valton, there are two bosses, this time white and purple. First, everyone will fight the white boss. No special gimmicks here, he'll just use his normal attack patterns that are consistent without the rest of the fight, learn them, and dodge. Cutting him to 55 bars will have him teleport to the center, beginning phase 2, which will split your raid into two groups. One group will be fighting the white boss while the other fights the purple. The assigned boss is always random and each party will swap bosses starting phase 3 after getting their boss down to 30 bars. The white boss will have all the major gimmicks. At around 45 bars he'll teleport to the center of the map spawning a white circle around him. All members need to be standing in the circle at the 11, 1, 7, and 5 o'clock positions. After an explosion a ball and gate will appear in your designated section. Do not consume the orb and kite it into the gate and match up the colors. The color of the gate will be random, the orb will always change colors in the same order. That order being red, blue, green, white, black, and then back to red repeating the same order. On hard mode, if two people fail this mechanic, it's a raid wipe. The next major gimmick comes around 36 bars where he'll teleport to the center again. This one is a simple stagger check. After completing the stagger check though, a memory mechanic will immediately begin. Each player will have either a black or blue orb on top of their head, meaning a total of two black and two blue. Black orbs need to stand at the 1 and 7 o'clock positions, while blue orbs start at the 11 and 5 o'clock positions. Like the pizza in Argos, you'll see a blue telegraph flash on the ground in a specific order. Pay attention to only the telegraph in front of your position and the order it flashes in. Sometimes it will take you all the way around to the opposite position. Upon successfully completing this, the boss will then cast a large red AoE that needs to be communicated back to the purple party immediately. This AoE has a safe spot that's either on top of the boss or a safe spot being on the perimeter of the map. Once again, this needs to be communicated immediately to the purple team so that the purple party knows where to stand as they will not be able to see the safe spot. When both bosses reach 30 bars, the parties will swap sides. It's recommended that the raid lead be always given to the purple party so that Nina V can be used to equalize the HP bars as the white boss will have less HP since phase two starts with whatever he was left with from phase one versus purple starting at 60 bars. After switching at 25 bars, the white boss will have another gimmick that will have four large circles appear on the ground. One of these circles will be colored white, representing the safe spot for the other party. This must again be communicated back to the purple team as they will have those same circles appear only all of them will be the same color. The purple team must go to the safe spot when these circles appear. The purple boss is really straightforward as all the attack patterns are the same minus the gimmicks from white. The difference here though is that you must actually stand inside of the purple telegraphs rather than avoid them making the attack patterns reversed. This is not to be mixed up with the purple shit that falls from the sky though, those you want to avoid. When the white boss party gets to around 13 bars, they will repeat the stagger mechanic previously done at 36 bars. Finally in hard mode, you'll come across a Velganos mechanic. This mechanic can randomly happen at any time against both white and purple bosses. The boss will cast a large AoE forcing you to stand next to him in the center of the map. Line up in the same position you would for the balls in the gate mechanic. After the explosion, prepare to run outside as four purple balls will immediately appear. This ball will follow you, then spawn a pizza pattern identical to the one in Velganos on the spot you consume it from. You want to pull this ball outwards towards the corner of the map where there is space. Do not consume this ball too early inside of the large AoE that spawns in the center of the map. You will take damage and die from this. After pulling the ball to an open area and consuming it, you'll see a yellow pie slice appear designating where you stand to begin. You'll also see a whirlwind rotate rotating clockwise or counterclockwise representing the order in which you run. Move in the correct direction to stand in the yellow area as it pulses as you would for the Velganos fight and receive a shield that will protect you from a big attack following this mechanic. 
If you fail to get the shield, you can still actually survive the big attack by support awakenings or even shields and damage reduction skills such as Rap City or God Sent Law. And that's it guys, that's a quick TLDR of Gate 1. Let me know in the comments if you found this to be helpful and good luck with the raid.